Hi, thanks for gardening with me. I'm Melissa and today I'm going to be finishing up this poolside garden project. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of work, but we've had some help from my husband and the grandkids. So I'm um, definitely making memories there. We planted some beautiful things that are just going to flourish. Um, they're getting some sun right now, which they absolutely love, but they don't get so much heat of the sun that they're going to struggle. Um, right behind the camera, there's a bunch of deer running. Love living in the country. So what I'm gonna be doing in the garden today is I'm gonna be planting all of my annuals that I've already bought. Um, they've been sitting in pots waiting patiently this whole time. I'm sure they're ready to get into the garden. And um, this euchre I pulled from my bed I have out front. Out front I have more reds and then in the back here, I have more pinks and purples and things like this. And this euchre has a lot of pinks in it. It looks like somebody took a paintbrush and just splattered all over it. And then the back side of it is this purpley pink and it's so pretty, I love it. So I'm gonna be planting this in here. Um, I've also got some coleus that are struggling a little bit out front. They're getting a little too much sun. So I think there's a few places in this garden that I can put them that they'll be really happy. And then I'm sure as I go along, I'll probably just plop a few more things in here. I do, I do have a hardy geranium that I want to put on this corner here. I have one on the other curve, and so I thought it would just be a nice to flank it on either side just to kind of draw you in. So we'll see how that turns out. It has beautiful color. Um, it, it has a flush of pink or purple blooms, and then they all die back. And then if you cut them back, they'll all bloom again at the same time. If you don't cut them back, they'll bloom again, but it just won't be one big flush like it was the first time. So really excited to get this started. Another thing I'll be working on today is um, I'm gonna be putting some grass seed down and it needs it desperately. Um, I brought some soil that is specifically for lawns, so I'll put some of that down first. And then the grass seed that I got, I will show you what it looks like. Um, it has like a mulch in there with it. So you don't have to put um, straw on the top of it. Um, you do have to keep it watered, but the mulch that's in there helps it ret retain the water. And so you have definitely a higher success rate. So like that, I like the fact that I'm not gonna have the hay all over the yard because you know, once the wind starts blowing that, it goes crazy. So anyway, um, come along with me. We'll show you what this looks like. So I also wanted to share with you, I don't know if you can see it on the side, but I got these at Lowe's for a dollar each. They were on clearance. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just getting towards the end of the season. And if you're a frugal gardener <laughs> like I am, I've got so many plants in my yard that I've gotten on clearance for a dollar, three dollars, five dollars. And um, when they're perennials, you can pretty much bet that they're not gonna look great the first year, but the second year they look just fine. Um, but with annuals, I mean, you just really can't go wrong. So this is my last set of flats that I'm going to be planting in here today. And then I'm going to move on to the grass seed. I am not going to lie to you, it is hot. It is 9.42 in the morning. And um, it doesn't feel like it's so hot when the wind's blowing, but the humidity level is just crazy. So I'm gonna plant these and then do the seed and then I'm probably gonna jump in the pool because I'm hot. I had to get my whip. That's <laughs> my whip.
these are annuals so they won't be coming back next year um, you know and some people might say well why in the world would you plant annuals annuals are great because they give you instant color and they give you great color for the whole season and i think i spent nine dollars on this whole flat versus nine dollars on one garden so this is what I see from from my kitchen window and from the deck but I still want it to look good from back there as well so I'm going to take some of these and put in the back so I guess this is kind of my version of behind the scenes I try to clean up as I go but uh, <laughs> this is a home base and I just dump everything in here and then when I'm finished um, I go inside and put everything away, usually, unless I'm just too exhausted, then it just stays in here for the next day. I, I know that I will be watering the seed and taking good care of it because I've got all these beautiful plants in here that when you start a vegetable garden, you really want to stay on top of it. I can guarantee you that this garden soil has got seeds in it of weeds. So over the next, until I get my mulch down, I'm gonna to have to be really vigilant out here. A, making sure that I don't have any of the aggressive stuff coming back up in the plants that I replanted. B, making sure that I don't have seeds that are germinating in there of weeds that are coming up. And C, making sure that everything stays watered. Um, they don't need a lot of water after they are established but at least for the first month, especially planting this time of year, um, I will water in the morning and every night and just make sure that everything gets a nice drink of water. But So I know that you can't see that. <laughs> um, it is Scott's Turf Build Lawn Soil. It's for lawn repair and overseeding. And um, it's supposed to grow grass up to 50% thicker. So I have got quite a few places in this area that's going to need some of the soil put down first and I'm going to rake that in really well and then I'm going to go over it with this um, see it's Scott's easy seed patch and repair sun and shade grows anywhere guaranteed so <laughs> that's my kind of seed the reason it's guaranteed is because it has mulch included in it so it absorbs a lot of the water so the seeds will not dry out so what happens with grass seed is you put it down you get it wet the seed starts to germinate the grass starts to come through the seed and then if it dries out the seed will close up and pinch off that piece of grass that was coming out and it'll be dead and you will not have any grass forever the seed will just die so you have to make sure that you stay on top of watering your grass seed. If you're not going to use this type, I would highly recommend using a shade cloth or hay to put over your seed. I'm not a huge fan of using the hay because A, it, it has wheat seed in it, so you'll get some wheat growing up in your grass, and B, it just makes a mess. If you get any kind of wind or I have the dogs, I would just have hay everywhere. So anyway, I'm about to get started. You can pretty much see where all the grass seed is growing, but I'll set the camera up and let you see what that looks like.
this is another area that when we put the drain tiles in, for some reason, grass did not grow here. Or this might be one of those places. I'm notorious for whenever I dig up a vegetable garden or flower garden or whatever, if I have sod, I don't care how bad it looks, I will take it around and put it in the low spots that are in the yard and then work on getting the grass to grow later. But there was so many low spots in this yard when we moved in and it's getting there. I don't have any more of that soil that I bought, so I just raked the area up really well and then put the grass seed down and I've got one or two more spots I'm going to do that with. So I think we've come to the conclusion that this swing is in disrepair. It's kind of wiggly, not super sturdy, being the fact that the grandkids love to play on it. I think we're just going to replace it with something that is just a little more sturdy. Um, it was at this house when we moved in here on the front porch and then we since then brought it back here. Uh, it's a great place to have a swing, but we need something a little more sturdy. I did just slap a quick, <laughs> a quick coat of um, black spray paint on it. And then as I'm doing it, I'm seeing the black fly through the air. I did put a tarp down, but then I'm looking over there at the bird bath and I think, oh my gosh, I hope no particles got in that. So then I had to take that apart and clean it, put some fresh water in it for the birds. I would just hate to make birds sick because I painted. So um, there it is for now. So that's it. This is the end of episode three. I'm not going to say this is the end of our poolside garden project because we still do have some work to do. I need to clean up this edge here a little bit to make the angles better. Uh, we still need to lay mulch and definitely need for the grass seed to come in. So I will do another video and update you after all that takes place so you can see what the final product is. And then here is the new bed. So we have a hosta that I transplanted, the um, Invincible Ruby hydrangeas, the white Veronica, um, that firelight hydrangea there, which I just watered back here, so they're kind of laying down right now, but man, they are just the prettiest white. And then in the fall, they'll turn a deep red. I also brought some coleus from another spot that was kind of getting a little too much sun, so we'll see how they feel here. Have the euchra right there, which I just, you get so pretty with the leaves. You really can't see the beauty of it in the picture, but it does look like somebody just splattered it with pink paint. And I have the white buddleia behind that. Two of the pink cone flowers. And in front of that, we have a sedum, and behind that, can't remember the name of it, but it's like baby's breath. A hardy geranium there, some more sedum, more zinnias, and these little guys right here, there's two of them. I grew them from seed. But I did it outside, and I wouldn't say that that was the easiest thing to do. It's definitely better to do under grow lights, but they're lupins. So I don't expect much out of them this year. I just want them to live, and then next year come back, and they should be absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> this my dog tore off one of my lilies, so I stuck it in dirt to see if I could save it. I don't know. It's worth a try, right? And then this is the back side of the garden. This is the Pierre's Japonic, Japonicus, I think is what it's called. I need to definitely beef up all my names of these plants, but um, that one should get 10 feet tall. It's going to take quite a while to get there, I'm sure, but it'll fill in this area really nice. We have some, oh, Black Eyed Susan's there, more lilies back there. Lamb's ear, 
So that's it coming up around the back side of this bed. It just looks so great. And you all know that everything looks so much better after you mulch. So after I mulch and after this grass seed comes in, I will definitely take another video and let you see what that looks like.